Good to see you. <laughs> At two instead of yeah, noon? Yeah, that's right. Just get better later. What was the scene when the name popped up? Well, I wasn't with the group. Uh, you know, I didn't have the courage, I guess, to be sitting with them as I Otherwise, we probably would have been at the cooler if I knew we were in and felt very confident that we were in. And uh, I hated that feeling one time in my coaching career and never wanted to do that again. So I, I bowed out as I understood. I came to the office, was with my staff, and I heard the players were in the, in the players' locker room together. So <laughs> it's nice that they can be rewarded for what they did and accomplished and came from the dad, basically, and kept pushing that lid off the the top of the coffin and we held it, we held it up this much and I, and I can't wait to see him today to congratulate him in person. How much do you think that win against UCLA, them being you know the number one team in the country now, kind of push you guys forward to, to make it to the Yeah, uh, there's not much doubt in my mind uh, just from some conversations I had secondhand, uh, the committee's professional, they don't leak anything. Like I said before, even when my athletic director when I was at Fullerton was on the committee. Those guys get on those committees because they're professionals, so they don't let the information get outside the doors, even if they're your own person. And so uh, there's not, there's no doubt in my mind that had we not won Sunday, we weren't in. And even with that win, as you could see, as they put up some criteria, uh, if I was uh, North Carolina and I was Michigan State, uh, I would be upset. Not that we're not worthy of being in the 64, but uh, if you just compare them to us, especially Michigan State, uh, the, the only way that the committee could have sold us is we're from a strong conference. Uh, kudos to those that were protecting the Pac-12's interests and getting six teams. Because I, you know, I, it almost, uh, not that the ACC and the SEC aren't strong conferences, are great coaches, great facilities, great players, but uh, they don't have the history the Pac-12 has. Plain and simple. So for us to apologize to get six teams in is ludicrous in, in my mind. And, and and there's many years. Last year, USC was 16 and 14 and in the conference and didn't get in. So we feel extremely fortunate uh, at the expense of Michigan State, maybe in North Carolina. Uh, maybe you can look at some other teams uh, that were on there that aren't traditional teams like North Carolina. For sure, is a, a traditional team. Uh, I feel like we're worthy. I just uh, I know in their position that they have to be a little bit bitter. Are you surprised at all that UCLA got the one and when you saw them pop up, you know, maybe that will go well for you guys? Well, I didn't like the sites. You know, yesterday that doesn't speak well for the pack at one site. And two in the Big West and three in the Missouri Valley. And, uh, well, uh, two sites, I guess, but three teams. And that, that kind of makes it, you go, uh, if everything else runs its course, you look at, the, okay, the strength. But sometimes there's that trade out, you know, they try to balance the book, so to speak. I've never been in the, the, be, behind those doors, but I would imagine, uh, let's say the pack only has one host. Okay, so now does that uh, say, well, let, let's, let's give six teams, you know, whether Oregon's that six team or not. And sometimes there's that little bit of trade out that they might err on the side of the, who gets the host, the national seeds, and then they balance the ledger with more teams that could possibly on the road make their way to Omaha. I don't know that to be true. That's just an assumption over the years. My instincts tell me that's kind of how they do it sometimes. What do you think of your region? They're all tough. Um, we knew we were going to travel, obviously. Um, uh, you know, to say it, it's doable or easy, I think it's disrespectful to the other three teams. Missouri State, obviously, deserves to host. They've had a tremendous year. Um, we might not even play them, so why talk about them? We have to worry about Iowa. The head coach at Iowa and I go back to uh, the All-American Committee. Rick Keller's uh, been on the same committee as me. He's no longer on there. He actually uh, coached at Indiana State, and I had a little bit to do with opening that door for him because Ronnie Prettyman Sr. is the athletic director there when Lindsey Meigs left to go to Washington. Uh, and Ronnie Prettyman Jr. played for me at Cal State Fuller. So, uh, certainly didn't hurt that Ronnie Prettyman Sr. was on that committee as well. He, he knows George Horton and his body of work and what I've done in the playoffs. And I think if it was close, that might be an eyelash thing that might have helped me, uh, quite frankly. And, but Rick Keller is a great coach and a great person. And I'm looking forward to seeing him. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy competing against Iowa. That, I heard they have a tremendous team. You say, what's your quick scouting? I'm assuming you jump on the computer as soon as you see who you're playing. What, what jumped out to you? Yeah, uh, you know, I was, I'll say to these guys, thanks for making me uh, very busy right now uh, with other stuff. My my role more is, you know, how are we going to get there? Where are we 
understand uh, media uh, responsibilities. My assistants jump on the nuts and bolts of it. Todd helps me with information. To be honest with you, I don't know much about any of the teams other than all the, all the 64 teams uh, are worthy at this point, and we're happy to be included. Uh, I, you know, I, if I looked at it, I, I'd say we might have, have a, a more doable ro uh, road than Oregon State. You know, their deal is going to Dallas, and then if they're fortunate enough to get through that, they got to go to Florida. Mm -hmm. and, and, and arguably, I'm, I don't know what Coach Casey's thoughts are, they would have been the second host in our conference. So I'm, I'm sure their fans are up in arms that they didn't get the post, I, I would imagine. And, and there's a part of me that doesn't like that as well, you know, whether they're our rivals or whatever you say about that. They're still an Oregon school, they're still a PAC school. And I don't think that speaks well for the PAC that they didn't get to host up here in the Northwest. And for them to, the road to Omaha has a lot of miles to it, for sure. Uh, whether it's the competitive part of it's more difficult or not. It, like I said, it really doesn't matter because teams get hot and cold in the playoffs and you know, we're just tickled to have a chance. When you think back to where you were a month ago or two months ago, how surreal is the day to, to actually know that you're in? Yeah, I thought maybe I'd be fishing or something, you know, and uh, it, it really is surreal. And I, I couldn't be more happy uh, for a group of athletes and men that uh, accepted the challenge. Uh, they could have folded their tents. Uh, it would have been very easy to continue to down that spiral of uh, negative snowball or whatever it was or lack of confidence or uh, we were emotionally, I can remember back at USC coming apart at the seams, quite frankly, emotionally and, and physically and everything. And from that day on, uh, things have turned around in a very positive manner. And uh, I think the real respect that you get in life and athletics is getting off the deck and do something about it. You know, if it's all downhill, if it's all easy, that's great. And, uh, you know, undefeated teams or what have you, you don't see those in baseball, but you do in football. Uh, that. I think when you overcome obstacles and challenges, it's a lot more rewarding. And so that, I guess this is going to be a, this will always be a very special trip into the NCAA playoffs for me is because we came from the dead for sure. Yeah, I think there's something to be said with that. You know, the hottest basketball team sometimes going into it. Uh, unfortunately, in football, it's not always that way because if you lose a couple games early, you don't get a chance to be in the, the BCS playoff. You know, that's how devastating the first few weeks are, even not even, not even a conference. But the uh, problem is that there's a long – now from this point on, there's a lot of weekends still left. There's a lot of days still left. And so you have to maintain that – if there is momentum, you have to maintain that momentum uh, very deep into June, and that's a long time. And then, of course, I've often said in baseball, momentum's only as good as the next day starting pitcher. And so, guess what? All the teams that are in the playoffs have some momentum, some more than others. So, uh, it, it'll, it, like it always is, you know, the team, that's why the number one seed in Omaha hasn't always won, and very rarely has won, because it's what you do there, not what you do leading into there. But. I like where we're at. I, I like where our mentality right now. Certainly, we were a team that if we got behind late, even though we had that seventh, eighth, and ninth chemistry and, and magical thing that we've had for the last four years, uh, there was some doubt. I get. I think would be fair to say with my ball club. And now we've we've been able to overcome some things, including ourselves, kind of like Duck teams have been able to do the last four years. I mean, we're more gifted than any of the other four years. But I, I do like where our minds at right now. Do you feel like the way you're playing now is sort of what you envisioned from this team when you looked at it going into the season? Yes, uh, really fair to say that. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, Josh now, Graham uh, filling up that Sunday role, uh, Peterson being healthy, Corbin being back to close to 100%, if not 100%. And we've got three viable starters that are all pitching a lot more confidently. And uh, heck, Nagosik and, and Clevenger are as good as it gets in the country. Uh, we wouldn't we'd take Berg on our, our team, but uh, there's a lot of good stoppers out there, including our conference. Uh, and, and most of all, often we're playing really, really good catch. You know, that, that's the personality of a George Horton baseball team, and that was missing. And that and that, that affected everything that else that we were doing. We were trying too hard on offense and running the bases crummy. And, so now we're playing duck baseball, uh, as we would describe it, and, and we think duck baseball is pretty hard to beat when you play it well. Heinem has really come on for a lately too, and player of the week today, but it yeah. seems like your kind of rise has come with him moving to first base and really being productive on offense. 
Yeah, that and, and Mitch moving to third. And, uh, you know, those two guys certainly are filling up that batter's box in a huge way. Heineman looked like a big leaguer this weekend and in the batter's box and results wise. And Mitch is doing, doing his deal. And we've got some other guys that have uh, dinged or not. Graybeck's playing better. Catalano had a big day. Got, you know, anytime you get two hits off Berg, it's significant. And, I think more guys are stepping up and doing well. The, the Casser story is a neat story off the bench from critical hits. And uh, Caravi Otis, you know, that's, uh, his defense has really improved. He's showing more leadership uh, than he was in the past, and we've challenged him with that. And he's doing that and hitting his first home run. That's what happens, you know, if you, if you do something in the playoffs, if somebody does something they're not supposed to do, if you're still talking to the media and still, still playing, still got the uniform job. When you talk about how this could have been the team you thought at the beginning, and that was a team that could have been a one seed type deal. Do you go into this then thinking, throw the one, two, three, and four out the way, and, and maybe the way this team's playing now, it's better than the seed and it's a little bit more even than maybe it would look from the outside? Well, we'd like to be at home. I think you, that's why you, you play so hard to try to be a national seed. Playing the road to Omaha at home is a, is a higher percentage. There's no question about it. It's doable on the road. Uh, it's tougher. I don't know, you know, the fans at Missouri State. I, and I understand the ballpark's fabulous. I know they're very good. Uh, there's some environments around the country, like the LSU's, uh, Oklahoma State's, uh, Corvallis, uh, that we played in in my early years at Fullerton when we weren't hosting. That are they are very hostile environments and very tough to, to get out of. And those traditional Florida State, Fullerton, those teams that host year in and year out. Uh, whether they're as good as they were the year before, the last time they went to Omaha, uh, it's usually a tougher road, to be honest with you. And, and again, uh, I guess the best way to say it is we have as much experience as anybody in our field, which I like. So uh, it doesn't mean we're, it's easy, but it, it, that, that experience factor and then the environment itself, I don't know how it'll be, but uh, I think it'll be a level playing field. That's all you can ask for. Well, my last national championship team, it was a longer close. We were 15 and 16. I, know, I don't know if you ever heard that story, but then we went 19-1 in conference and beat Weaver, and and then we, we just mowed through the, the playoffs. So that team was good for a long period of time. My 07 team uh, limped and struggled at Fullerton, and uh, we, were, we, we were fifth place. And actually, Cal Poly had a better overall record, beat us two out of three. They gave it to us, and that might have been a, a Fullerton George Horton award. Uh, we were lucky, we were blessed. And we went to Omaha. Unfortunately, we lost two games. We lost to my old friend, Toronto, at Irvine, and Pat Casey got us in the first game. So. But we did make it to Omaha, so that, that's a pretty good finish when you can get through a regional and beat UCLA at home in a super regional. They were good that year. So. What's the schedule like for you guys until that first pitch? It's hectic. Like I uh, was going to say, uh, at the beginning of the year, I tell these guys, make me the busiest human being on the face of the earth. I'm not there yet. I'm busy. Uh, but uh, gosh darn it, I'd much rather be doing this than fishing. Uh, and then it just, hopefully it just gets busier and busier. We'll leave Wednesday. We'll practice today. Light workout today. We typically take Mondays off. Uh, we lifted today. The kids are just coming from weight training, and uh, we'll have a light workout. We'll practice tomorrow, and I think we'll try to get out. We don't know what our flight arrangements are yet. Uh, fingers crossed that we get a charter, but that's all up to the NCA and all that stuff. And uh, then we'll get back there, and they uh, we'll get acclimated uh, to the time zone, and uh, we'll practice Thursday, and we start Friday. So. Thanks, George. Thank you.